Hello and welcome to this edition of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason, hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. You can call me Jason. And this is just me sharing my own personal opinions and stories, histories, as seen through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller so many years ago. I'm actually a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar tutor. I've been teaching it for five years now. Um, there's almost 400 grammar videos on my YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, you can find a link in the description, which actually, if you are listening to this right now, you are on my grammar channel. And uh, also, if you want to email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com to apply for a uh, correct sentence structure workshop, you're more than welcome to do that as well. jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today, I'm going to be perhaps a little bit more forward and a little bit more blunt than I have been in the past. I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking more about those individuals out there who claim certain titles and kind of the psychology behind claiming titles, the volition behind claiming certain titles. So I'm just going to get right into it. There are at least two individuals out there in what we will call the quantum grammar domain who claim the title commander and chief. At least two. And I have to ask you, the listener, the viewer, if you see someone claiming a title like that, where do you think that individual gets the authority to claim such a title? Now let's flip it to the fiction, okay? Where in the fiction do you find an individual who claims the title of commander-in-chief? Whether it's commander and chief or commander-in-chief. However you want to say it. The same uh, basic meaning is conveyed. Well, you find that in the office of the quote-unquote president of the past tense United States of America. Commander-in-chief. Am I right? And how do they get the title? Well, supposedly, they get voted in. Supposedly, it's by consent. Now, by unanimous vote, which means supposedly a majority of the participants in voting voted in whoever it is who claims the title. Not everyone consented to it because there were some people who voted for someone else. So those people did not consent to this commander-in-chief. So I guess... In this sense, they're the losers, and the winners are the ones that voted them in. Which, by the way, since we're talking about the fiction system here, I hope those of you who (laughs) cast your ballot for the individual who's in the Oval Office right now, I hope you are enjoying every moment that your commander-in-chief is bringing to you. I hope you're enjoying the administration and all the wonderful things that they've done for you, your families, your gas tanks, your economy, your jobs, your travel, your work, your vacations, everything. Hope you're enjoying everything that, uh, that the administration has brought that, that you uh, supposedly voted in. Now, I mean, come on. I say supposedly. Because those who know, know. First of all, in the fiction system, it's not the popular vote that 
allegedly elects an individual. It's the electoral college. And even then, who knows what goes on there. I prefer to use the word selection. It's my opinion that these individuals are basic figureheads for corporations. They don't really hold any authority or power at all. But that's just my own personal opinion. Now let's flip back to the quantum grammar domain. I just told you how a commander-in-chief is put into position in the fiction. So how is a commander-in-chief put into position in the fact? If participating with facts and participating with quantum grammar and correct sentence structure is correct, and it's a geometric level playing field, and it's neutral, how does a commander-in-chief get put into place there? Does that mean that 100% of all the individuals involved voted and agreed for this individual to be in there? Or did they appoint themselves? Did they just come in and say, I'm going to be the commander-in-chief. It's my title because I use this type of grammar and I made this type of document with this stamp on it and this says that I am who I say I am. And that's it doesn't matter what you people think. doesn't matter if you consented to it or not. I don't need your permission to be your commander-in-chief because I use this grammar. Is that how it works? Is that how correct sentence structure works? Because guess what? What makes that any different than the fiction? If someone is forcing you to buy into their title of commander-in-chief when you didn't agree to it. Well, I mean, seriously, how did that happen? And commander-in-chief, that is a military title. Wouldn't someone have to actually be in a military to claim a military title? I mean, don't you have to pay your dues to have a title and to perform on that title. I know that I claim the title of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, tutor. I've definitely paid my dues there. There are almost 400 videos on my YouTube channel certifying my knowledge, not to mention the hundreds of people that I've taught. I'm confident I can walk out this door right now and teach anybody walking down the street correct sentence structure if they want to learn it. I can perform on my claim. Is that the same thing as these people claiming commander-in-chief in the quantum grammar domain? Can they do that? Who or what, how did they get their authority? And are you okay with it? Are you okay with subordinating yourself to them in the same way that you're okay with subordinating yourself to the quote-unquote president of the United States of America? Are you okay with that? Did you consent to that? Did you permit it to happen? Otherwise, it's being forced upon you. Now, of course, that's your choice if you allow that to happen. That is your choice. It is a choice. There's no doubt about it. It is a choice to consent to that. Or to accept it. Or to agree with it. Or to not agree with it. Or to participate with it or not participate with it. It's completely up to you. Using logic, common sense and the principles of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, in that light, through that lens, with the peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, and honor and grace, you have to wonder what type of psychology, what type of mental condition of state would someone have to have to actually want to have a title like that and to actually force people into addressing them as the chief <laughs> or judge or general or whatever. What type of individual creates that type of position for themselves and then insists on other people addressing them that way just because they say so? That's an open-ended question. I wonder... 
because I know for myself I would never claim such a thing. I claim correct sentence structure uh, grammar tutor, but that doesn't mean I'm your grammar tutor. It just means I'm a grammar tutor. So in the same sense, these individuals who claim that title, commander-in-chief, if they mean that they're commander-in-chief of themselves and their construct, well, okay then. That's fine. That's cool. Because guess what? I don't want to come anywhere near their construct or anything they're doing. I don't want shit to do with them. I'll keep them as far away from me as possible because I don't want anything to do with that type of mentality. I mean, they're fine to do whatever they want as long as they're not affecting me or what I do. And they don't for the most part. They are basically harmless because with my opinion and my position, I see them as being no better than the fiction. They're just like the fiction. They navigate just like the fiction, as I've shown. So these are just questions, logical questions, that I'm sharing with you that I've had over the years regarding these individuals that claim these types of titles. Just basic questions. You know, why, why would someone feel the need to do that? Is there some sort of insecurity going on? Because, I mean, you can see insecurity in someone who acts a certain way. It's sort of like the, the bully who gets loud and yells and throws things around because they want to seem like they're tough. They're a tough guy. There's someone to be reckoned with. It's, but basically, they're just harmless, which they are. Just make a lot of loud noise. Kind of like a dog that's barking but that's deep down inside is very scared because they're unsure of what they're doing. That's what I see. And people who buy into the barking, that's their choice to buy into it. Definitely their choice to buy into it. It's all a choice. Everyone has a choice. That's the beauty of contract. Contract is by consent, by choice, by permission. Keep that in mind the next time you see commander-in-chief or chief federal postal judge or postmaster general. Did you consent to that happening? Did you consent to subordinate yourself to these people, to these individuals who claim these lofty titles? Are you okay with bending the knee and kissing the ring and addressing them as someone above you, over you, who has authority over you? Are you okay with giving up the copyrights to your live life claim to them? That's on you. That's entirely up to you. Me? No thanks. All those people who claim those types of things can go over there with the fiction and sit in the little fiction corner and do their little fiction games and make their little fiction videos. That's fine. Have their little fiction seminars. I know there's a couple people out there at least, one in particular that I can think of, who really does know how to market and business them, uh, market themselves in a business sense where they're making a lot of money off of this stuff and they don't ever, ever, ever share any grammar content little to no grammar content they will make videos telling their viewers and followers what this word means or what that word means but they will use google or they'll use some other adverb verb adjective pronoun plain english definition of a word to give closure they never ever use correct sentence structure in a video ever and yet these people have thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers and they make a lot of bank on it just by the way they market themselves. I mean, I'm pretty sure they have a whole, a whole ass marketing team and everything. And what happens to the people who don't buy into it? 
I can't imagine anybody being around those individuals for any length of time and not being able to see through what's going on and becoming disgruntled. I know for a fact, and I have personally met people who were friends with Colin David Eipenwin Cole Miller and his protégés, his students, and his associates over the years, who have shared with me some very pertinent and interesting behind-the-scenes information regarding the way all that stuff went down, how correct sentence structure came to be, what exactly happened, what the hierarchy was. And although, you know, I'm not with the volition of sharing that type of stuff to the public because I think it detracts from the grammar itself because the grammar tech is pure. Correct sentence structure is pure. What you do with it is up to you, whether you use it for good or bad, whether volition is honorable or dishonorable, whether you want to use it for harm or for positive performance is entirely up to you. But the grammar tech is pure. And I feel like if I share that type of information about the history of it, the things that I've learned, that, that people are going to perhaps, it could poison the, the water, so to speak. But I will tell you this. It is information that I do share with my most advanced students. After they've reached a certain level of closure on the grammar, and I know they can take care of themselves, and they can safeguard themselves in their biospheres and their constructs, I do share these things with them so that they know, so that they have an idea of exactly how this grammar technology came to the public and the people who perpetrated it, what their personalities were, how they interacted with one another, what exactly happened um, during all those trials and tribulations. Because I do have some, some, <laughs> some crazy stories in there. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. So keep in mind, any title that someone claims, if they're claiming it for themselves, that's one thing. But if they're claiming it for you and your family and everyone else on earth, then that's a trespass. Because I'm 99.9% .9 sure that not everyone on earth agreed to or consented to someone claiming the title of commander-in-chief who has never even been in the military. And they certainly never agreed to someone being commander-in-chief using a grammar technology that they'd never even heard of. And I mean that most people on planet Earth have no idea what correct sentence structure is or, or why it would be needed. I can pretty much guarantee that. And yet these people are claiming these titles over everyone on planet Earth. It's very, very silly, in my opinion. If you really think about it, it's quite laughable. Hardy har har. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that about wraps it up for this edition of the podcast. Hope you just remember that Authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge to another contract party. That's where authority comes from. In other words, if you know what it is you're doing and what you're talking about, you got nothing to worry about because you are your own authority. You don't need someone else to have authority over you. You don't need to give that up to somebody else. Uh, you know, Because it's your choice, though. It's your choice to be your own authority or to let someone else take authority over you. Completely up to you. And I hope everybody remembers that. And I hope everybody remembers the three principles uh, that I teach in relation to correct sentence structure. And that is the maintenance of the rule one rule equal. The balance of the honor and the grace. And the position of peace and neutrality. Some people forget these things. Those are the key elements of using correct sentence structure successfully outside of knowing the technology itself. 
which of course is the most crucial element of the whole thing is to be able to have to be able to achieve closure on this grammar and be able to teach it to someone else under duress because when you end up using this in the public uh, in a now space scenario, usually it is going to be under stress. And you just, you got to be able to perform without getting mad, without getting unsettled, without getting fearful. Just be nice and calm. Measure your the cadence of your breathing. Calm, cool, collected. Uh, and you'll be fine because authority comes from knowledge. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. And take care. Be safe. Catch you next time.